one of the worst things we have to fight in this process is the arrogance that comes from knowing. I'm going to say that. Again. One of the things that we have to fight is the arrogance of knowing. Because once you know, and you know that you know, you have to be careful, because there's always more to know. Because what works today, new circumstances may arise as man and woman begin to progress under present day knowledge. So if we think we know and we stay there we get stuck so knowledge is an ever evolving process Jesus said it like this He said, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, if Jesus <laughs> has the mind of God in him, and he says, be. It's already done. <laughs> because when God, through his Christ, says, be. Things are already in motion. Wait now, I'm coming to something. The Holy Quran says, the heavens and the earth were created in six periods of time. Billions, trillions in the period. But every human being, even the beast, is under the number six. Count. Here's wisdom, Revelation says. Him that hath understanding, let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 603 score and six. So all of us, even if we're acting bestial, which is just about everybody, the Bible said they had the mark of the beast in their forehead and in their hands. So if our thinking is off, and Lord knows it is, when we are so carnal in our thought processes, that material existence means more than spiritual existence. Then the life force in us is compromised and it is used for gaining material things. And we feel that in gaining more material things, we are better, we are successful. Well, it's true that if you gain material things, you have to say, I'm successful to a degree. But the Bible says, what does it profit a man <laughs> if he gains the whole world <laughs> and loses his soul? So nothing is more important than the spirit. The spiritual being. 
Nothing is more important than the spiritual reality of the human being. So if the life force is resurrected and cleared of debris, then the people can focus on what is proper, right, and natural to be focused on and the material things will fall into place. This is, this is why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom. And what? And all its righteousness and all things will be added unto you. So if we're under the number six, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us represents incompletion, dissatisfaction. There'll never be change as long as people are satisfied where they are. So there'll always be a group in the human family that are dissatisfied. There gotta be something more than this. There gotta be something better than this. Well, wait a minute, you're in something good. Yeah, but good can be made better. And better is not yet best. So when there is natural dissatisfaction, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, dissatisfaction brings about a change. So when one is dissatisfied, out of that dissatisfied group, a leader will arise. Born with an idea to evolve humanity toward Perfection. I'm trying. All right, now. Behold, I make not some things, all things new. Well, where do things come from? All things come from the mind of some human being. You know, there is no mystery God that like abracadabra and stuff happens. That's what's got the world all messed up, a spooky religion. And as long as you keep people out of cause, they will always be the effect of those who can create a cause. Now, now, now. Look. <laughs> Since all things come from a creature, he said, well, it's, it's not the government. It's not, you know, it's the system. But where'd the system come from? See, that's like saying we're all caught up in the spider's web. But there wouldn't be a web if there were not a spider. So God creates creatures that do something. Birds, the book says, have nests. Foxes have holes. But the son of man has no place to lay his head. Why not, son of man? You mean the bird is more intelligent than a son of the supreme of beings?
that a bird can point to something that it created to serve it. Nest. Fox is not waiting for a coyote to dig it a hole. So if we are waiting for a mystery God to come on down and change the condition of the planet, well, the planet will be around messed up for a long, long time. So the God said, behold, I make all things new. Well, he, he's telling you that he's dissatisfied with the things that present man has made. God is. All things that we've been involved in that we think we've made say well it's nice he doesn't invalidate us he said, he said you know what you've done is nice it ain't good enough but that's not invalidation of what you've done it's just telling you you can do more if you knew more So in order for God to make all things new, he has to make a new human being, a new man, a new woman, from whom will come a brand new reality. Am I making sense? So let's see how this present stuff well, we already know it needs something new because everybody in this room is dissatisfied. Uh, is anybody here satisfied with the condition of the world in which we live? The satisfied one, raise your hand. I'm hiding mine because I sure am not satisfied with this. Are you? No, sir. Well, then, if we are not satisfied with the condition of our families, our homes, our mosques, the society in which we live. We're not satisfied with our churches, our schools, our politics, our government. We're not satisfied with our system of justice because none of it works. It doesn't produce peace. It doesn't produce brotherly, sisterly love. So there's something wrong with it. Yes, sir. We gotta make a new man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and we've gotta give that man a new mind. Yes, sir. Now, the Bible says it like this. As by one man's sin entered into the world and death came by sin. All men have sin, so all men and women are in a state of death. That's a heavy statement. Well, what is sin? Sin is rebellion to divine and natural law. Ignorance of the law really is no excuse because once you break the law, there always is a consequence. And only God can hold back the consequences of law breaking. Well, I, I believe I can fly. So I'm going up to the Willis Tower and put on my cape and I'm going to fly. Yeah, right. Once you jump into that law, there's a consequence. And only God can stop you by something that might catch stupidity before it hits the ground. 
So, so, when the Bible says that Adam rebelled, he broke divine and natural law, which brought consequences. And the result of the consequences of that death is that human beings, listen good now, in the last 6,000 years have not been what they have the potential of being. 